Hi, my name is Vincent Lee, and this is an artist that I admire. The photographer that I chose for this project was Ruben Wu. He's an English photographer, director, music producer, and even a member of a band called Ladytron. He currently lives in Chicago, Illinois. Born in 1975, Liverpool, England, he was a child that got molded by the movies and films of the 80s, such as Blade Runner, A Space Odyssey, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Stalkers, and many, many more. But profoundly, the year 1982 stood out to him as the most influential year. Most of his works were, were influenced by the sci-fi films of his childhood. In college, Ruben went to the University of Liverpool for design. He graduated in 1997 and finished his master programs in 1998. He soon after got a job working in a small design company. And then he started working with his band called Lady Tron and they eventually got very popular and then they were offered an album deal and they even got tours. On tour, Ruben became very interested in travel photography, capturing and documenting the places the band toured to. Soon it became just as important as his music. On several occasions he would find himself a flight a week in advance to the place that his band would be torn to. And he would spend his time walking around, taking photos of the landscapes, and just into just looking at places to see, like this photo. It was taken in northern Chile, and he found this sign in the middle of the desert, and he thought it was really nice. But it turns out it's the equivalent of a Home Depot sign in Chile compared to what he thought it was, which was like a special art. In his early years of photography, it mainly consisted of photos taken on a medium format camera using film. He used different type techniques of film, doing long exposure, light paintings, pushing film. He would use different types of film, ranging from black and white color to even infrared, as such as the last, photo, last two photos. During this time, his works had a consistent theme of otherworldly, almost with many of his works looking like they were straight out of a science fiction movie. And with this concept in mind, he would go and shoot landscapes in many new ways. And, and he would look at the light, the time of day, and the position of the sun or the stars and how they would affect the image and how they would line together into one photo. And he would constantly try to seek out new landscapes and new forms of light. Such as in this photo where he's taking a photo of half of the eclipse. As time went on, Ruben started to gravitate towards more of a digital medium instead of film photography. This was due to the large majority of the places that he shot at being frozen over and cold. And that would cause the film to freeze. So, which was a huge pain for him because he constantly had to stuff his cameras, these large RB67 cameras, into his jacket. And he had to have to rub them and constantly hold them to keep them warm so that he could wind the film or at least try to shoot the film. For the last couple of images and the one coming up, those were all digital, and you can tell that they're a little bit larger, and they're a little bit bigger, and, and the quality is somewhat higher, less grain, and there's less time used to take these photos. You didn't need to do a long exposure because there was less responsibility failure, or none in digital compared to film. In 2016, Ruben started to look at new ways to shoot photos, turning towards drones, and he started experimenting and playing with them and flying them around. At first, he would take photos um, up top, around, and like all around his subjects with his drones, and he would look at them and he saw that they came out rather flat, he didn't like them, they didn't have much perspective, and eventually he decided that he would start attaching lights to his drones and he would light his subjects like that. With this, he brought professional studio lightings into an outdoor environment, creating images that look bewildering and dreamlike, and that have never been seen before. Like, who, who actually sees like mountain ranges with a line lighting it up in the middle of the sky? No one. So these images were new, cool, and they, they're just really expressive of what he wants to do as his art as he found out a new way to show landscapes and to capture them, giving them a new genre of photography for him, for him to explore and for him to do. And, and you can see this now that he has inspired several people and several tons of photographers to do 
new photos like this, lighting up landscapes in the middle of the night, flying them around and, and playing with them, with drones and seeing how they can affect your photos. And with this in mind, he started creating and drawing things in the sky, such as designs, triangles, circles, squares, and even crosses. And with this, he would usually plan out his photos by drawing out the landscape, paying attention to what it was, where it would be, and he would usually scout out the place online first, look at his photos, think of, get an idea of how he wants the photo, draw it from his design background, and then he would go out and try to shoot the photo. When Ruben was finished shooting these photos, he would call them aeroglyphs, since they would look like hieroglyphs suspended in the middle of the air. In this photo, I, this was taking the Bolivian salt baths as he was ambassador getting sent out by phase one to do this. And one of the reasons why I chose Ruben Wu as a photographer I admire is not only because of the work that he has done, but as since he's an early adopter of new technology, using them in ways no one has imagined before inspiring many around the world to do the same as he did as he started aerial drone photography where you would light things up and you would take photos with your camera and your drone would be your light source.